Hello world, my name is Tim Russell, and welcome back to another daily game dev video on the developer of a game called Battle Barn Tactics, which you can wishlist now if you want to head on over there to Steam and click that wishlist button, I'd appreciate it. But today, we're talking about friction, and friction is something that I've struggled with a lot with my game Battle Barn Tactics, because I'm trying to make a strategy game, but I'm trying to make it approachable. Dare I say the C word, casual. Yes, that C word. Uh, so... What is friction and why is it preventing me from making my dream strategy game? Uh, well, I'm going to tell you, and we're going to talk about it right now. Friction is the thing in between your player and the intended experience. And with that broad, super crazy definition, you can see how a lot of things can be friction. But I'm going to give you some specific examples. Uh, friction can be, let's say your game's multiplayer. Uh, if it doesn't have matchmaking, getting a group together can be friction. If it does have matchmaking, uh, not having a high player base can be friction, right? If it takes five or 10 minutes for the matchmaking to work, um, what else can be friction? Um, Philophobia has a lot of friction cause it had some levels that, uh, would spike in difficulty. The game was too hard. That's friction. That ended up being a stop point, right? It was, it stopped the player from progressing It stopped the player from having the intended experience. Um, Fallout. Fallout's a perfect example. Uh, if you <laughs> ever played like 60, 70 hours of Fallout or Skyrim and then like take a week off and then like or a month or a year and then come back to that game and you're like, what the hell is all this? Where am I going? What have I done? What, you, you know, that's, that's friction. Um, all of that from various different genres from various different game mechanics from various different IPs uh, all of that is friction and the problem with friction is that it's so general and so vague but it's also that's the reason why it's so important is because it can kind of creep up in a, a ton of different ways and the more friction your game has the harder it is for players to experience your thing now some games try and increase their friction as their sort of like you know hallmark of things dark souls is a perfect example it's got a lot of friction and, and by way of skill right uh and in dark souls uh for example that kind of acts as a um a separator right so you've got the people that can play it and can beat it and then you people you got the people that can't and so because there's so much friction skill-based friction in that game uh you have people wearing completion of it as a badge of honor socially right it's just it, it tends to be a thing that we do uh so but then there's also the other spectrum where it's just like players just bounce off and they'll never tell you that they bounced off and they'll just never play the game again uh and i definitely 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 i hate to i hate to continually bring up philophobia because it's a game i kind of want to forget about uh, but like, I learned so much about this in that game and it was, it was so cringeworthy to watch, uh, people play my game and then just like n not be able to experience the thing. And like, it makes sense, right? I was making a skill based platformer, but like, it's also got this story about how love is literal hell and about this person that's trying to overcome love, trying to kill them. And I guess I never really thought about people being stopped from experiencing the story by their lack of skill until people started telling me that they really wanted to experience the story, but they couldn't because they're not good enough. And I was just like, ah, that hurt, man. That was that. But, but that brought up a good question. Like what's more important, right? And the problem with friction is that like, sometimes there's, there's not a clear right answer. And sometimes you have to make a call right with philophobia that's a perfect example because here you have a skill-based platformer based on love being literal hell right and you've got fans on this side that want a skill-based platformer that's going to make them have the skill to get across and you've got fans on this side that want a story they want to understand what happened in the game they want they want to experience this thing and there's some overlap but you have to make a call you kind of got to pick one right because having a, a pure skill game stops people from experiencing the story and having a per story game stops skill-based players from ever wanting it in there now accessibility 
is a good way to kind of reduce friction in a lot of areas. And I have a lot of videos on accessibility in various different forms. Uh, but by tweaking little things, you can decrease the friction that uh, people experience in your game. And I wish I had a good solution for you. Like, I wish I had a, listen, go do this, and then you eliminate friction from your game, because we all like the top three things you need to do to remove friction from your game. That would have been a great headline. But I really don't, because the the problem of friction is so, uh, I don't want to say generic, but it, it's such a large, like, subject that like there's a lot of ways to solve a lot of different problems but a lot of times what you're going to end up doing is you're not even going to know it's there and so the point of this video is really to just tell you to pay attention pay attention to friction pay attention to friction points in your game pay attention to experiences that players have that can stop their current experience that can prevent a a, a, a renewal of experience a re-engagement or can stop somebody from even playing your game, right? Uh, marketing, believe it or not, is actually a very big point of friction because what bad marketing does is it stops people from buying your game. So literally, you have someone that would love your game, you have someone that loves your genre, they're browsing Steam, they're looking around for a game, they come across your page, your page does a shitty job of telling them what the game is about, stops them from experiencing the game and now you just lost the customer just because you weren't good at like explaining your game and you weren't good at communicating with the person that wanted to buy your game so i just want you to think about it that's that's my main thing is like i want you to be aware of the places in your experience and and in marketing we would call this the funnel right the whole the whole way through the experience but in game design too i guess you could look at a game as a funnel i've built funnels for like my game and like the achievements that people have uh, achieved in the game, but like you want to be aware of those points, those points that stop people, those stories, points that prevent people, those points that um, can disengage people, because that's going to be a big change. If you can identify those things, you can almost always solve them. Maybe not with the perfect uh, option, because there often is no perfect option, but you can almost always uh, figure out a creative solution. So uh, that's all I got for you. I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, I want to say thank you to these people right here. They help me keep doing what I'm doing every single weekday, uh, posting daily game dev videos. Uh, if you want your name on this list, you can head over to patreon.com slash game dev. A link is down below in the description. Uh, but my name is Tim Ruswick and I will see you again tomorrow.